Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to use the Blender Blend Me plugin to try and do a simple energy analysis uh, using um, Energy Plus. Now I'm going to start off from where we left off at tutorial 2 and we still have the sun and the camera there and we don't need them for this actual analysis so I'll get rid of them. Uh, now what I'm going to do is um, I need to do, need to mark th that that is a zone. Uh, now Blender doesn't re know um, uh, doesn't use solids. It only it only knows that there's um, surfaces there. So I need to mark it somehow. And what I'm going to do is add a zone marker. And I'm going to just make it a little cube. It could be any object. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm just going to make a new material. I might call it um, zone. There we go. And uh, I'll just make it dark in color, almost black. Um, there we go and I'll move it just just to kind of the center of the zone, there we go um, okay so I've got it in there now uh, I should start up my plugin obviously so go to add-ons architecture plugin there we go and inside of the object properties if I go to energy I can actually assign that as a zone there we go and there's various other uh, things that we can assign to the zone like HVAC and infiltration properties but I'll get onto them later now the more pressing issue in this case uh, which I have to be quick about because this is a short tutorial is I've got to actually um, explode all of these flat faces uh, and assign them to the zone because it's no point if they're all one big s surface and the way I'm going to do that um, quickly is actually using the really cool select link flat faces feature of Blender and I can actually make it 179 degrees so it's got a tolerance that much and it selects that and then I can just parent that uh, so what I'll actually just do is go through and do that with every surface um, now I need to actually automate this process but that might be done in the future normally when you're uh, building this model from scratch um, you'd be wary of this having happened uh, that you'll have to do this so you won't um, so you'll be careful when you're drawing so that you won't have to do this um, but it doesn't take too long to do uh, I've got a few more surfaces to go that one and just these shading elements now there we go, so now I've exploded all these objects apart and there they go and I should probably also explode um, these windows as well because see they're all one object at the moment um, so what I'll just do first of all before I explode it I'll actually, so I don't have to go through and assign uh, materials differently later, I'll just make them a glazing type so that they're all like that and object type I'll make them um, openings as well so there we go uh, now what I can do is I can select link flat faces one more time I can parent that one there we go so now I've got all my glazing now what I need to do is actually go through and actually assign the type that each um, surface is and the way I do that is I go in here now by default they are external walls but I need to assign the parent object so what I should first of all do is go into here select that object and call it zone or um, zone 1 if you have multiple zones and now what I can actually do is just assign it a zone. Now what I can can do as well is it's really nice to have the origins centered to the geometry. So you can see all these relationship lines in here. Now when an object isn't parented to an appropriate uh, zone, it just goes straight to the origin, the global origin. So you can see as I'm actually assigning these surfaces to the zone, the construction lines, we'll have a look in a minute, are pointing to the zone. Uh, there we go, see that sucks. Okay, now I need to actually assign this is actually not an exterior wall, it's a roof. That should point to the zone. 
and likewise that there is a floor so I'll call it slab on grade and it's assigned to the zone as well. So this is what I'm talking about when I say and you can see the, the uh, hierarchical data structures these, ob these objects here um, are not actually exterior walls at all, they're just shading elements, so they don't have a parent, and the construction lines disappear when you do that. Now this one here, this is a little overlap there, uh, it might actually be useful if I just grab that and turn on lock, and just, whoops, just grab it, oh dear, there we go. Just so they don't overlap, it probably would have solved, but just to be sure, I'll uh, make sure none of my, sh my elements overlap so I'll, and I'll make all these shading elements so if, again if I had been a bit more careful from the very early stages I probably wouldn't have needed to do any of this stuff uh, so there we go now the only thing we haven't done now is, is um, you can see inside of here the uh, floor um, walls, everything like this is attached, so that's all very nice. Um, there's one random one there, um, which which is actually the openings. Um, these windows haven't been assigned a parent yet, so if we look at those window and they've got a blank parent, so I just point to the, ob to the origin. Now, when I exploded them all, they all, all the objects end up with a pretty strange name, cube.009 or whatever, that, that's what happens when you explode things, they all get unique names. Way to get around that is I've actually got auto detect and assign opening script which goes through finds the object and actually automatically assigns the parent to it it finds what surfaces are enclosing the uh, object and there we go um, this one parent is cube 14 and that's called cube 14 so now I've selected all of these um, one thing I might so now now I've got the relation relational um, data structures all set up for doing a building model. What I might want to do now is actually assign material correctly, and I'll call it um, 100 millimeter concrete. There we go, and I'll just set this uh, properties for it. Um, concrete has a conductivity of about 1.4, um, 2100. Um, 840, that's about right, and we'll make it uh, 0 0.65 for the absorptance. It's a pretty light colored one. Now I can you can see that's changed the material across all of it, uh, all the objects that are assigned that. Now this window, we can call it 6 millimeter float glass, um, and it's a, a type glazing. So it's 6 millimeters, so I make it 0 0.06, and all those other ones are actually defaults for 6 millimeter float glass. So I'll leave that. Now what I'll do is I'll save this as test case 5 just, just in case. Um, okay so now we're, in, we're almost ready to go with this. Um, I've uh, assigned all of my um, objects uh, their, their material type and properties and whatnot. Um, now what I'll do is um, I might want to actually assign some infiltration to this to this zone here before I run a model so um, what I have to do here is go back and actually create a schedule and I'll call it, um, by default it's always on so I'll call it always on um, 0.2 air changes per hour and if I go back to the object menu infiltration I can actually assign it always on Let's put 0.2 in there as well, there we go um, now we want some reports to be printed out when we do this year-long energy model so one thing I might want to do is go into here to reports and add uh, zone air temperature there we go that's one and this wall here is quite a nice one um, I'll add a report for that and I'll make it surface uh, convection heat rate entering the space uh, now I know what you're saying about the materials um, I've assigned co um, concrete everywhere um, that's not very realistic you're saying because generally you've got uh, multiple layers of construction in a building but that's fine because Blender actually has a materials stack here so for the roof here um, what I'll actually do is um, get rid of uh, that concrete and I'll add a new material there we go. I'll add a new material called um, roof gravel there we go and the roof gravel will be uh, rough, I'll make it quite 
thin uh, with a con conductivity of about uh, rock um, um, specific heat of 881 uh, density uh, um, 0 0.65 there we go and then I'll add a new material here and I'll call this one roof insulation and we'll make that 0.1 thick with a low, pretty low conduct conductivity 0 0.023 uh, it's got a pretty low specific heat of 24 um, pretty low density, sorry, and a specific heat of 1590, so that's what makes it uh, insulation, obviously. Uh, now those visible don't don't matter because it's in the middle of a wall, so it's obviously um, uh, not going to be affected. So um, then finally, I'll just add as my final uh, insulation the 100 millimeter concrete. So now I've got 100 millimeter concrete inside, roof gravel, roof insulation, and then roof gravel. Um, uh, just to separate the roof gravel from everything else, I'll make it a bit of a darker colour. There we go. Alright. So that's pretty much ready to go now. Um, we've set up all of our objects and uh, the relational um, structures and we've assigned materials. So what I'll do now is just go back here. I'll just check. I can change things in the um, setup if I want to. Time steps per hour, shadow frequency calculation. I can assign HVAC systems if I want, but I don't have that just yet. Reports. Uh, I might want to actually output um, outdoor dry bulb temperatures. So that's fine. I'll save all this and go to control. Now what I want to do is actually just export Energy Plus IDF. There we go. And that should have exported by now. You can see here, done. And then run Energy Plus. So you can see here what it's doing now for Perth. It's going through the year um, running the calculation. We're up to April, May, middle of May, June, end of June, July. Um, and it's just working out all the surface um, heat transfer through all of the surfaces and the zone temperatures and all that sort of stuff. Um, all right, so it's gotten to the end. Um, now what I might want to do is just view the results And that starts up this really cool post processor that these guys have developed. Um, and I might just select all of my materials here and actually um, go line plot. And there you go. Um, I've got zone air temperatures, surface um, convection heat rate per meter squared, and outdoor dry bulb temperature. So if I actually just zoom into a typical summer's day, uh, let's say around here, you can actually see uh, there's the, um, t the the surface uh, heat transfer of the eastern facing wall is getting hotter in the morning and dropping off as it gets shaded in the afternoon. But uh, as the sun moves over around the middle of the day, um, the um, outdoor dry bulb temperature reaches a peak and because we've used a pretty heavy construction 100 mil concrete um, there's a little bit of a lag between the um, air temperature in the zone and the peak um, outdoor temperature. Um, Alright so that's run through the uh, use of um, the BlendMe plugin for uh, energy modelling. Thanks for